Croesio i Cabarthod, Lawna Cango, welcome to the full council meeting. Um, please note that this meeting will be recorded for subsequent broadcast via the authority's internet site. The images and sound recording may also be used for training purposes within the authority. Uh, the public seating areas will be in full view of the camera and by entering the chamber and using the public seating area, members of the public are consenting to being filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings out, as outlined above. Uh, before we start the council meeting, I'd like to, uh, to welcome Michelle Jones, who was elected as the councillor last week for Cavarth Award. It's a first meeting. So, um, so the first item on the agenda is apologies for absence. So, Gareth? No, no, no apologies for absence. No. Oh, Gareth. Gareth. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Harvey Jones has given his apologies. Um, the next item on the agenda is declarations of interest. Uh, well, we'll start with David Isaacs. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a predetermined interest on uh, number four. Right, you are. Uh, Chris? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Agenda item four, uh, proposed resi residential development and it's the public perception of predetermination. When planning committee first decided they did have a view on this, I had several robust public conversations on the merits and otherwise of the case. Anybody overheard was now will think I've got a predetermined view, so I'll have to leave because I think I've come to the Ombudsman's attention quite enough over the last few months. Uh, oh, uh, Gary and Thomas. Yeah, I um, spoke to the monitoring officer today. Um, although I've been involved with cancer aid in, in the past with many different things, I'm free to speak and vote on this issue. Oh, Gar Gareth? Uh, uh, Darren, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Agenda item five, um, pay policy statement. Uh, my wife works for the local authority, so I'll declare personal and prejudicial interest in that item. Thank you. Howard Barry. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, item number four, I've got personal prejudice of interest. Uh, the member of the board of Cancer is a personal friend of mine. Um, are there any other declarations of interest? Oh, Declan. Thank you. I've looked into this and I've asked a monitoring officer in regards to uh, agenda item number four is cancer aid. Um, I don't believe I'm predetermined. Um, comments were made before. Um, the application was resubmitted, so I think I'm okay. And I, w I was told it was up to uh, uh, the members to, to decide. Okay, thanks. Is there any other declarations of interest? No. <coughs> uh, yeah. So the, the next item on the agenda is minutes of previous meetings. Is there a proposer? Mr. Mayor, sorry. Oh. Could I just uh, query uh, Councillor Declan's um, non-declaration of interest? Is it correct that Councillor Salmon signed a petition on this matter? Sorry. It's a matter for each member to decide for themselves whether or not they have an interest. It's not a matter for discussion. So the next item on the agenda, minutes of previous meetings, has been proposed by... Mr. Mayor, I pro uh, propose the accuracy of those minutes. Se <coughs> second them? Yes, I second them, Mr. Mayor. Are, th are there any uh, questions? <coughs> Is there any comments? No? Oh, we'll just take it to the vote then, thanks. Next item on the agenda, oh, oh that, that was carried, yes. Yes, the, yes, yeah. the next item on the agenda is item four, is new declarations of interest. So this item is the proposed residential development on, on the land at East Street, sorry, on land at East Street and Union Street, Dowless, application P18, 0330. And <coughs> I understand Councillor Hughes is taking this. Uh, 
Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I did ask before the meeting if I could give out these documents. That's okay. That, that's okay, yeah. It's the one for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we can have a deferment if you like, or a adjournment if you like. Yeah. Right, if the council wants to receive advice, which will include whatever is in the document, which none of the officers have seen, the officers will need to read that document. Currently, we don't even have a copy of it. Um, so I'm really not clear as to how we're to deal with that unless the officers are given a copy now and have the opportunity to take five minutes to read it. Would that be that there? Uh, oh, friends. Thank you, Jill. <laughs> yeah. Chair. Mr. Mayor. Hello. <laughs> yeah. We well, I want to ask a question with regards to this. Yes. Um, I'd like to know, we've been handed this piece of paper now, and it, it, to me it doesn't get, I can't get no tail of it. Is this, c is this coming from David Hughes himself now? Because if the councillors, if the officers don't know anything about this, surely we should have had this a long time before this meeting tonight. I'm a bit confused with this. It was only yesterday that I had the plan, so only yesterday I looked at them. I would have thought that you as councillors would have looked at plans yourself. Pardon? Perhaps what we ought to do is Have to the officers had these plans then? Because quite w look of expression on Caris's face, they haven't had it, David. So let's get to the facts here, please. All plans are on planning, are on the planning department's webpage. If you want to look at plans, I would have thought you would have looked at plans. If you were talking about the plans commission, you would have looked at what you're talking about. Even the ones with handwritten writing at 10 metres and 16 yeah. metres on yeah. in red. Pre I don't think so. Before we enter into a debate about this, this plan that you've just handed out, is this a plan which is currently existing in the planning department? Yes, it is. So perhaps what we ought to do then is to start now if Councillor Hughes uh, makes the proposal. Okay. Right. Proposal, um, the proposed residential development of the land at East Street and Union Street in Douglas, uh, P18-00330. The purpose of this report is to consider the planning application for the construction of 12, 10 dwellings and associated retaining walls, park and access and footpath on the land at East Street and Upper Union, Union Street, Douglas. Um, 1.1 to 1.4, that uh, describes the, um, the way the, what have happened in planning and the, um, the way it, uh, we have come to this uh, planning year today. It, it just uh, is what uh, it's gone through planning and gone to uh, 
public meeting and then gone to back into planning and that's how we found ourselves here today. Um, 1.5, the merits of the planning application are considered in detail in the planning consideration section of this report. <coughs> the application has been assessed against a relevant doc a local and national planning policy and is considered to be in compliance with them. Um, the re recommendation that uh, was that the planning application uh, be approved. Uh, the piece of paper that I put out by you shows the vision display on the parking with uh, on number one, two and three, which I believe don't uh, meet the, the legislation in the parking uh, coming out onto a road. Um, our vision display is 45 meters, I believe, the vision of sight, line of sight is 45 meters, which our building regs uh, look for. Um, if you look at the drawing that I give you, uh, the parking plot one has only got a 10 meter display. You can only see 10 meters from where, where, from where it's uh, to mark from, and with two and three, it's just 16 meters, so that's far less than the 43 meters that is requested by planning, by building rights and IUEs. Thank you. So what are you moving, um, well, Councillor Hughes? Move oh, sorry, sorry, Cats. I move because it don't meet the building regs. Or I'd have to be reject this proposal. I therefore move. Is there a second, I second that, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Um, sorry. Yeah, yeah. The, the next thing now is questions. Uh, Frank? Yes, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I go back to this drawing which you've been given here and you know I bow down to Councillor Hughes's expertise in planning because I'm certainly not an expert and I never confess to be I don't think he is either really but with regards to this with regards to this Mr Mayor you can come back David more than welcome with regards to this this drawing we've been given here now tonight then and if Mr Hughes Councillor Hughes is on about looking at planning and looking at the drawings and things as I've said, I'm not an expert in this, not my expertise. I'm looking at it, I don't even know what I'm looking at, truth be told. And I'd rather have somebody tell me and talk me through this, what I'm looking at. So with regards to this, are the 10 metres, 16 metres, 2.4 metres, which have been written on in pencil and red, are they in the planning documents, which we should have looked at in planning then, David? Perhaps, perhaps if one of the planning officers could comment on this drawing and, and the accuracy and that sort of thing. Thanks. Yeah, the drawing itself is a blown up version of what's in the, uh, in the planning documents. The annotations on that plan are not, don't form part of the planning application. The drawing does, but the, uh, the annotations don't. So just to clarify then, if I had looked at the planning documents, those wouldn't have been on there? No. Not the annotations, no. Perhaps Th someone thank you very much. Perhaps someone in the planning could explain whether this application does comply with the building regulations. Uh, yeah, as far as I'm aware, the building reg regulations don't include uh, visibility display lines. Vis vis visibility display lines relate to highway safety issues, it would be a matter for the highways department to look at visib visibility display lines. Visibility display lines are usually on roads uh, entering the site or new roads created. Uh, they don't uh, uh, usually relate to car parking spaces, because uh, as you can see, with the, ha the hatched areas on those car parking spaces, you drive into the car parking space and then obviously reverse out of the car parking space. So they haven't got any visibility display lines at all because you're reversing out of that space onto the highway. So your visibility is, is zero because you're looking out. So it, it's just a matter of, as any other um, residential site where you've got car parking spaces next to highways, you reverse back onto the site and then out. It's, it's, it's all down to the speed of traffic along that road and how uh, much that road is used for traffic. And in this instance, the Highways Authority have looked at it. There's tracking exercises in, in, the, in the plan applications that show you can reverse on the site and come back out. And therefore, there wasn't any issues raised from a highway safety point of view. 
Um, could, could I ask for clarification? When the original plan went in and highways approved it, the road was, you know, s such a width, but then they increased the width of the road, and apparently that's altered the splay. Have the pla highways considered it since it's been altered, the plan? Yeah, I'm not sure the display has been increased at all or, or, or decreased. What's, what's happened is the carriageway width has been increased. Uh, to uh, There was concerns at the first uh, site visit from local residents that the width of the carriageway uh, was too narrow uh, and it would cause problems for two-way traffic. So as a result of that, uh, the applicants have increased the width of the carriageway um, by decreasing the width of the footway uh, by half a metre. So the, the footway went from 1.5 metres uh, from two metres to 1.5 metres, and the, uh, the width of the carriageway has been increased accordingly. Gar Gareth, did you? Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillor Hughes earlier referred to a contravention of legislation. Um, what legislation were you referring to, please, Councillor Hughes? Highway safety. It's a Sorry, can you put your mic on, please? Um, the accessing of any new build... Um, it's highway, uh, the officer's right, it's an highway department. Um, I must disagree, but he says it doesn't matter when there's a new building, because when I just built my own house, they wouldn't approve my house until I could uh, uh, satisfy the highways that they could see the, the highways display in the highways, and that's only just going in and turn, reversing back out. So. I must disagree with you, yeah. Uh, Gareth? I'll ask the qu same question. What legislation are you referring to? Which act, please? I believe I said I raised that. The I raised the I raised that. Pra perhaps the planning officer can elaborate on that, please, because I'm unaware which act he's been referred to. Please. Yeah, the, the, uh, the highways of officer will look at each individual application based on uh, the traffic speeds, the vision uh, at that junction, um, how many car parking spaces they'll be providing on there. So it, it, it's a, w we look at uh, something called the, um, the uh, county surveyors highway standards basically for those issues. Um, and it, it's all dependent on speed of traffic in that area, depending on when, how much vision displays you need in that area. Uh, from our point of view, from a plan officer's point of view and a highway officer's point of view, um, obviously, if you're reversing out of a car parking space on a road that's going 60, is a 60 mile an hour road, it's uh, obviously a significant highway safety issue. But if you're reversing onto a road where speeds are minimal, then the highway safety, safety issues are, are significantly reduced. So it, it's, it's all, you have to base uh, your judgment based on the individual planning application you have before you. And in this case, obviously, it, it was considered that the, the speeds of the roads and the width of the roads and the traffic movements down there was sufficient enough to cater for uh, cars reversing onto that road in a safe manner. Can I just intervene at that moment? You, you asked for a clear statement of what the legislation is. I think nobody is going to give you a clear statement of that legislation. Councillor Hughes has raised it without warning to, to the officers, so th I don't think they're going to be able to tell you precisely which act it is. What's clear is that there is some legislation, because clearly the officers are able to tell you that there is some legislation, but that we're not at the moment, the officers are telling you that there is some discretion within that and there are requirements as to how you evaluate whether something does or does not comply with that legislation. I can't tell you what precisely that legislation is right now, um, but as the officer is describing, it's something that uh, has to be applied and then uh, officers will tell you how it's applied. That's understandable. Thank you, Karen. Tanya? It was in relation to um, the the things that Hugh raised, so I'm assuming it would have been, ra you know, it was you, you've, you've mentioned it was raised as a potential risk and then assessed and then determined. Clive talked about a road being widened. Am I right in thinking that's not in here? Have I missed something? Or, or that whole issue around driving in, reversing out, the road being widened, is that not in here? And if, if so, if I, you know, apologies if I've missed it, but if it's not in here, I would question why isn't it in here, if that's something that's valid. In, in the report itself, the main report itself, yeah, the, the main report will probably look at highway safety issues in, in the main report. Obviously, there's plans that are submitted 
with the application to look at these things. Uh, there's not the report won't highlight every individual issue, but it look at it overall and say overall we've looked at these issues and there isn't a highway safety issue. We consult obviously with the highways authority. They will look at the issues and come back if there's any concerns with regard to parking or highway safety or vision vision displays, um, and and raise those concerns. It's it's not highlighted in any specific report that we've looked at the vis visibility from every car parking space space in the scheme I it's acceptable it's a, just a generic response to say that looking at all the plans there isn't any any problems from a highway safety point of view or pedestrian safety point of view given the fact that it's been raised now and it's not in the report i don't really know how we're supposed to respond to that really because you i would you know, I would have expected the report. If if it's something that's been uh, this were uh, d uh, deemed worthy of raising in in the chamber, I would have expected to see it in the report. So, I'm not really sure. To be clear, if you look at page seventy five, the first substantive paragraph on that page seems to deal with the issue. Mr. Mayor, can I suggest to be helpful to members? Um, I'm not familiar with this site at all, unlike Councillor Carter. Um, I can't make head nor tail of this um, what's been presented to us, but obviously Councillor Hughes raises some, you know, very important and pertinent points. I, I note from the report that obviously the planning committee themselves um, requested uh, an undertaking of a fact-finding site visit. Um, I know that might be quite cumbersome and difficult for members, but obviously in order to help members deal with this, might it be useful if I propose that perhaps uh, we undertake a, a fact-finding site visit to you um, in order to, you know, move forward and resolve some of these issues. Yeah. Is there a can seconder for that? No, no, no. no. Yeah, can I? Is there, a sec <coughs> is there a seconder for a fact-finding visit? Oh, no. 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 So, then, uh, is that all right? Yeah, um, I think Councillor Hughes has brought up a good point here, right? And, it, and I'd like to ask the officers, is this a material planning consideration? that he's brought forward here today. Yeah, highway safety is a material plan consideration, yeah, absolutely correct. So is he right in, in recommending perhaps that we reject this application? Well, obviously the officer recommendation is to approve the application and we feel that the, uh, the highway safety implications of this are acceptable in, the, in, in this instance. So from, from, a, from a, a judgment that the officers have made in, li in line with the highways officer's comments, the application is obviously recommended for approval. I think. I think I, what I would say is, if you, if you go to any residential site today and have a look at off-street car parking on any residential site, um, you will note that this tandem development uh, uh, parking, as we've got before us today, on any new residential site, site that's been permitted uh, by this authority. Mr. Mayor, are we discussing? the substantive, the, the approval, or are we discussing an amendment? And if it is an amendment, what is the amendment? No, it's not an amendment bef because Councillor Hughes has amended the actual proposal that's been put to you. It's actually quite confusing because now what you will be voting for is a refusal of the planning application because it's, it, the way Councillor Hughes has amended it makes it a little bit difficult. So I was, before we get to any kind of vote, I will make sure that everybody's clear what you're voting for. But that is what I understand has been proposed, is that the substantive recommendation is that it be refused. Thank you. Uh, uh, did Lisa, did you put your hand up earlier? Uh, I, I was just going to suggest, I think it was the Highways Act 1980, uh, Mr. Mayor, but I may be wrong. Councillor Hughes? Yeah, the highways um, report was done when you had a 1.5 meter, uh, two meter curve, uh, curve on the one side, path run along one side. You haven't reviewed it since you've narrowed the path to 1.5, so that's taken the vision sleigh back into the car park. That's why it's it's not m it's much worse than what it was before. Uh, I'm. <coughs> I understand that the, the application before, the, the motion before you now is one for refusal. I have I've spoken to the planning committee about this when they put up the reasons for refusal. 
any reason for refusal must be very clearly stated. So I will need to know, as the top table will, the exact wording for that refusal in, in the first instance. And it's got to be based on a sound planning principle and related to policy. There can be more than one reason for refusal, but my understanding at present is you only have one re you are just given one reason for refusal. Right. If council decides to go ahead and determine that this matter should be refused, then the, the applicant or the developer, whichever term you want to use, does have the right to appeal that refusal. Now they have six months from the date of the, the refusal letter being issued by the planning department to appeal that decision to the planning inspectorate. The planning inspectorate can deal with it in a number of ways, either by way of written representations, which I've explained to councillors before. That is just, it's an informal way of dealing with it. It, it is all on the papers, basically. It could be dealt with by way of an informal hearing. That's a round the table discussion with the developers. And you, as councillors or whoever you determine to represent which however many of you determine that you need to be there to put forward your case. Or it can be dealt with by way of a public inquiry. That is a far more formal procedure. The inspector will lead everyone through it and he will, the evidence will be heard for both sides. Now, in relation to that, ordinarily, if a matter was, going, was refused, the officers would attend. However, in this instance, the officer's recommendation is quite clearly one for approval. So the officers of the council will not be attending the public inquiry or an informal hearing to present the council's case. Because the first question <coughs> they'll be asked is, as a planning officer, do you agree that this application should be granted permission? And they're going to answer yes, at which case it will all fall away. It's therefore councillors that will have to attend any informal hearing deal with any written representations or attend the public inquiry on behalf of you as councillors. It's your decision. Now I have to make it very clear to you that when we get to that stage, costs may be awarded against either party. We as a council would have to fund our own costs. Now whether that be the fact that we look to em employ a planning consultant to see if anyone is willing to take it on for that one reason that you've given for refusal or we could look to instruct or you could look to instruct a barrister but what is what I cannot make clear enough is it will be you as councillors that will be providing that evidence you've chosen a technical reason for refusal so you're going to need to be able to argue that technically against what the experts have already provided in the report and our the, the council officers have determined should be approved. So you're going to have to overcome that hurdle. Costs don't tend to be that low. So we will end up, there will be costs for <coughs> the developer. If the developer has to employ a barrister or a solicitor to represent him at the inquiry, there will be those costs. And the inspector is also perfectly entitled to make an award for his costs as well. It is also possible, of course, that in relation to any decision made by council, that the decision gets judicially reviewed. That's always open to the developer or any, anyone in relation to any council decision. Uh, Andre? Oh, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm still not clear that the assessment of the visual spray was done prior to the road being widened and the highways happy the cars would be reversing into that road with limited vision onto a 30 mile an hour road if that's if they're happy to put their name to that then I, that I would be clear then where we are but I'm not sure that that that's been explained and if that is the case They have no objection to the application. Declan, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's a question for for Gary Wright. 
uh, Councillor Hughes has, has given one, um, one reason. Can we bring other reasons to the table and do we have to do them now or through the course of the, of the debate? Councillors need to know exactly what they're voting on. I need to know what those reasons for refusal <laughs> are. I've explained to you <coughs> right at the very beginning. So you get right, really. Uh, uh, we are emphasising, we're discussing Councillor Hughes's uh, drawing and, and the points he makes. But uh, we were at the planning meeting, I, uh, the two planning meetings we've had on this. Um, that page seventy four, three two, uh, are outlined the the, the reasons uh, we were going for refusal now. The point that Councillor Hughes has raised is certainly on there, the, to the highway, that's the second one. But we are discussing here um, a total of three, uh, three grounds we were discussing. So uh, I take your point about costs and, and how detailed we've got to be. Um, but I think as, as the night goes on and the debate goes on, it won't be only uh, highways issues we'll be talking about. So. I just wanted to be absolutely certain about that, that you know, you appreciate it's, it's not just the highway. I understand exactly what went on at the numerous planning committees that we've had and the fact-finding visits. At present, the amendment that has been put forward by Councillor Hughes is to refuse this on one ground only. Uh, Councillor Roberts. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, could I ask a question, please? How many prior meetings, including site visits, have been held looking at this application? Uh, in total, there was four meetings. There was three committee meetings held within this room, and there was one site meeting. Thank you. And so that site meeting, it is a fact-finding meeting of the council. It isn't actually a public meeting. Yeah, another question for me, Mr. Mayor. Um, when was the last time a planning application was referred to full council for full council to sit as a planning committee, please? From recollection, I think it's the Hale Gerrid site where it fell outside the settlement boundary. I cannot say for sure when it was, but I think it was about three to four years ago. And that is because it fell foul of the LDP. A departure from the LDP then. Uh, Councillor Carter. Yeah, thank, thanks, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I, I just want to clarify one point. As I, you know, as I said, I far from an expert in planning matters and uh, you know I look around the room and we've got people who work in social services I work in department work in pensions we've got taxi drivers we've got all sorts of pizza delivery drivers we've got people who work for MP I don't think any of us have got any really our expertise in this so I'm with regards to sorry Lisa no I okay so I just wanted to confirm with regards to page 75, and I can as understand it, this is this is a really emotive subject. With regards to what Councillor Hughes is saying, can I just, are, you, are the officers confirming that there's no problems whatsoever with regards to the decrease <coughs> put for path from two to 1.5 metres for the visibility and everything? Yeah, that's correct. The visibility is, a, is an issue for me, though, because when you're driving into a car parking space, forward, driving forward into a car parking space, and you're reversing out of that car parking space, where's your visibility when you're driving, reversing out? Right, I can understand if you're driving out of a car parking space, but you're reversing out of a car parking space. You've got, you haven't got visibility until you've, you've hit the end of the house, for example. So, um, but... But based on that, um, based on the question, uh, yeah, there isn't any house objection or planning objection to uh, to the layout of the site. Oh, Councillor Mitten. 
Thank you, Mr Mayor. Can I just clarify, is it, is it a legal obligation to drive into your drive and reverse out, or is it a preference? Well, it, it, it's, it's, it doesn't, doesn't matter from a planning point of view. You, you, you have to provide uh, spaces for planning, but whether someone reverses into it or goes into it, uh, uh, reverses or goes in front ways, you, you can't control that from a planning point of view. No. So therefore, the matter is still debatable, isn't it, whether it's safe or not, because it's up to you as the individual homeowner, whether you reverse or drive your vehicle in or out, yeah? Okay, cool, thanks. Thanks, Declan. Thank you, Mr Mayor. This is uh, just a little question for the, for the planning guys. Uh, Mr Tibble Highways Department made a recommendation originally that a road safety audit was required. Um, however, the DPP, the agent ask, uh, acting for Mr Tibble Housing Association, refused to, um, uh, refused to submit an audit. Have they done one now? Yeah, that, that was in relation to the, you may recall, the original plan application had two bungalows at the top end of the site. No, no, it, it was for, the, they requested a road audit for the two. Well, that, what, that's what was that part of it. Was it was part of the discussion to the highways authority. They wanted a road safety audit because obviously the top road is a, is, is a more traffic road and the access into those two bungalows at the top was problematic and hence the reason for asking for a road audit for the, for the two bungalows at the top of the end site. I don't think it, clar it, it stated that in the, uh, in the plans I in the beginning that it was for, for the top. I think it was for the whole site. Sorry, sorry. What plans are you talking about? A road safety audit wasn't submitted, submitted with the application. It, it came as a request. When the the pre-application, it was requested by highways that because of the scale of the development, uh, but more so because of the two pl uh, plots on the top uh, Upper Union Street. O it's a, a much faster road, much busier as a main road coming through, whereas East Street is a, a more of a quieter road. It's opposite a junction. You've got the topography as well to take into consideration. So highways asked for a highway safety audit to address whether there was any safety issues and what measures need to be put in place to make it safe, if, if it can <coughs> be made safe. Because the developer didn't want to or felt that they did, it wasn't justified that it was needed. Um, they didn't provide one as part of the application. But the reason why the bungalows were taken out was because of the fact that they hadn't done a highway safety audit. And so it, in order to progress the application, um, there was obviously a stalemate. We were asking for a safety audit. They didn't think it was necessary. Um, but obviously, in order to progress the application, they took that element of the development out. So that's why we're left now with the houses at the bottom. That road itself is a fairly, it's a small road, you know, so you're not going to do high speeds like you would on Upper Union Street. It has, and it's, it's yeah, okay. And, but, uh, but obviously in terms of visibility displays, that would have been uh, more of an issue then at the top because obviously because of the nature of that road, you'd need to, the way the visibility space displays work is that you've got the 2.4 meters, that's the setback, and that's to account for the fact that the driver at the front of the site is not at the front of the bonnet. If you're reversing out of parking space, you're much further back. So that when it comes to these situations, visibility space don't work um, for, 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 par for driveways. They're more of an issue when you've got junctions, so vehicles coming out at the end of East Street or coming up, up the top onto Upper Union Street, but because those junctions are already there, they're already fit for purpose. And so there was, in terms of visibility space, there wasn't any real issue. But I just want to pick up, you can't really see it on this plan, but on the original plan, there is actually a visibility display provided uh, for uh, the, ca the uh, communal car park, which shows that visibility space can be achieved. And that's because the vehicles there um, can actually turn within the site as well. Yeah. Oh, Councillor Amos. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we're talking a lot about the, uh, this highway issue. Uh, can I ask Caris, is would this be a suitable time to uh, propose an amendment to this, to take it further forward, or do, you, or do I have to wait for another period of time? Because uh, as, I, as, you as you told me, this has been an amended proposal from Mr. Hughes. Can I now, could I now make a formal amendment to that? 
or is it, or do I have to wait for it to, to do that? Councillor Hayes moved the original motion, so it's not an amendment. No, he's, he's changed it, so that's the substantive motion. You can at any time propose an amendment, so if you want to do that now, you're, you're free to do that now. Okay, thank you. Um, well, so far we've concentrated on that highways um, issue, um, and as Geraint has rightly said, if, if we go from here tonight uh, with this, this is the um, grounds for refusal that we'll have to defend. This is, this is as I understood Geraint to say um, when, you, when you were advice you gave her. My, my amendment is that tonight uh, it f the, pro the, the application be refused but on the grounds that were as set out in on page 74, paragraph 3.2, which was the grounds given, uh, and there was a slight amendment at the last planning meeting. Uh, I was, for whatever reasons, the planning committee there, we won't go into those, uh, failed to, uh, wouldn't refuse and wouldn't approve, so I don't know what that meant. But uh, my amendment is that we refuse the application on the grounds are set out in 3.2 of, of the report on page 74. Oh, sorry. It's a lot better, this microphone. This is extra. What I'm going to ask Erin to do is just be clear because that doesn't sound to me like an amendment so much as adding in some of the grounds for refusal. So I think, and Geraint can tell me if I'm wrong, that if the, uh, if the motion is to refuse, that what you then have to do is decide what your grounds are. It's not an amendment to the motion. It's still a motion to refuse, but you just have to add in what grounds you're going to rely on. Geraint, can you tell me if that's right? The <coughs> they have to be quite clear what their reasons are for refusal before they take the vote. So if they're looking to have those through as well, then they will need to form part of yes. I think what you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is to decide for yourselves what you would consider to be the grounds for, remove, uh, for refusal if you are going to say that you agree <coughs> that there should be a refusal. So the, the proposal, I don't think we'll deal with it as an amendment. I think all we'll need to do is be clear when we come to the end of the discussion and debate exactly what the grounds are that you're going to be proposing and then we'll put the, the, um, the motion to the vote. Yeah. Oh, Councillor Rogers. Just a point of clarification to the monitoring officer. As the debate widens and we start talking about it, then you will find other reasons to turn this application down. So after questions, when it's open to speaking, which many of us are going to speak here, I think then you will have added it be added to the one uh, amendment or the uh, substantive motion which comes here was it done, then you'll find more. You'll put them together, as far as I'm concerned, and that's what you do. That's exactly right, Councillor Rogers. That's how I see it, Kate. Uh, are there any other questions, Councillor? Hmm? Oh, the, the lead, yeah, yeah. I just want to be clear and ask the planners that they recognise the point that Councillor Hughes made, that it is a material planning issue. Sorry. Yeah, if, if it's site, highway safety is the issue, hi highway safety is a material planning consideration. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Oh, Tanya. Yeah. Um, it, was to, it was to go back to the safety issues that were identified uh, that were prompted the road safety audit. I wasn't exactly clear. You, you, you talked about um, something around the bungalows being moved to mitigate the risks that had been identified. Is that so? My question is, it did removal of two buildings completely minimise the risk in the same way that a road safety, the, re the, the response to the road safety audit would do so? The highway engineers asked for a, hi a highway safety audit for the whole application because obviously what they were looking at was the whole scheme. So when we discussed uh, the issue about the fact that they hadn't provided one, it was apparent that the reason they were asking for one was because the two bungalows at the top of the site were being accessed onto essentially what they consider a busy road which had a number of constraints. Because they took the bungalows out of the scheme, it essentially omitted the need for 
the highway safety audit. So then we were left to, to assess the highway safety implications at the lower part of the site. Um, and we had some changes like the uh, increased width of the highway to pick up on one of the points earlier. Uh, we did reconsult the highway engineers on that. So they have seen the revised scheme and, and they were happy with that. Just for clarity, because in initially you, you, you talked about, I think you mentioned either four or five different issues around road safety. Um, it was the junction, the speed of the junction, main road, and so on and so forth. So are you saying that removal of the bungalows addressed and minimised all of those risks that you mentioned earlier? Well, as pointed out, is those are the sort of constraints that the highway safety audit would have looked at. And that's, that's the difference between access at that point of the site compared to the access uh, being proposed on a lower part site. So uh, obviously the, um, the way they presented it is that the driveway for the two bungalows would have been coming out essentially opposite the junction uh, by the church. And it's on a point of the highway where it's, sort of, it's quite steep. So forward visibility for drivers can be um, difficult. So the highway safety audit would have assessed that. It may have come to the conclusion uh, that it was fine um, and that the risks were manageable. But without that report, we couldn't draw a final conclusion. But because that part of the scheme was omitted, there was no longer a need to assess the highway implications at that point of the site because there is no development going there. There's no house, no bungalows pre presented at the top of the site. Oh, uh, Malcolm? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. You caught me with my mouth full of mints. I do apologise. Um, can the planners just confirm that on page 74, 3.2, bullet point 1, substantial loss of amenity for a voluntary organisation that provides palliative care to a person suffering from cancer, is that a planning concern? The loss of amenity is a, is a material planning consideration, yes. So that is something that we're, we're able to take on board and it's for each individual member to decide whether or not that, how that affects cancer aid. Well, the loss of amenity is a material planning consideration. Yes, quite, quite clearly uh, the report um, refers to that and is recommended for approval, but it's, it's up to a, each individual member to make their own decision if, if they're going contrary to the officer recommendation, yes. Okay. Councillor Carter. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, can I just ask very quickly then, with regards to what Malcolm was saying, with regards to the loss of amenity, can you, can you tell me what amenities will be lost, please? I can't because I haven't put the recommendation forward that it's refused on those grounds. Our, our, our grounds, our officer's recommendation is that the application is approved because I don't think there's a loss of amenity. Okay, thank, thanks for that. So if somebody, I obviously I want, I'm not on the planning committee and lots of us aren't. Whoever was in the planning committee meeting, could somebody actually say what the loss of, what, the, what they mean by the loss of amenities? Because I'm not quite sure. Councillor Skinner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, right, what's at stake if we lose cancer aid as an amenity or a community facility? Between January and December 2018, there were 2,696 journeys made to and from NHS cancer treatment services, which equates to 58,000 miles. Many of those using the service for. Oh, I, no. do apologize. So I, I appreciate that you've got a written speech that you're going to want to make and you will get the chance to make it. All the comments come later, really. Well, yeah. I would say, and come uh, from comments and statements made by users uh, of cancer aid, it would be the whole facility could be lost. Just so just, just to clarify that then, so I've got it clear in my own mind. So with regards to that, if this site went ahead, what you say in is cancer aid would close. I'm, I'm awfully sorry, but I just feel like uh, it's the s same question. I don't feel like the question's been answered. 
the road safety audit wasn't done. So I suppose I'm looking for assurances that the the identified risks have been minimised sufficiently, and I don't know whether you answered that. The reason for it was because of the, the, the element of the development at the top of the sites. That was the only reason it was requested, essentially. So because that part of the scheme is not part of this application anymore, ordinarily, if, we, if that element of the development wasn't presented at the start, then highways would never have asked for a highway safety audit for what is being presented now. So in their eyes, it, the risk uh, to highway safety is, is much less uh, on East Street than it would be on the Upper Union Street. Does that help? Oh, Councillor Amos, that, that, that's for you. Um, yeah, I think I can have a go. I'm going to start by answer, uh, answering Councillor Carter's question, um, uh, and I'll try and make it as succinct as I can. Uh, having been familiar with Councillor Eight for a, a long time, I remember it when it was in Victoria Street, um, and I know the amount of effort that went into putting it where it is now. I think I can really bring it down to um, privacy for the clients going back and forth there. We, we have, and I'm Declan has touched on how many go there. And the peace and quiet and tranquility of where it is. Now, for someone who is touched by cancer, uh, that's a big, big thing. And they provide a fantastic service. And I think with a development like this around it, I think that will have an effect. And I think that that is how I would define amenity. And that is the loss of amenity. I wouldn't go as far as to say quite clearly that if it goes ahead, Cancer Head will go and it'll be finished. The building will still be there, but it won't be supplying the standard of service that it is now. Uh, if for no other reason, there won't be so many people going there. Uh, that is immunity, loss, loss of immunity or maintenance of immunity is a, is a judgment. The, we are been arguing about the uh, highways and 10 metres and 16 metres and all of that. You can do that with foot rule, but you can't do define that as, as in the same way with an amenity. Matter of amenity is a judgment. My loss of amenity might not be your loss of amenity. Whereas uh, with Councillor Hughes's measurements, perhaps we can argue about that. That's a matter of fact, and it's, and it's very easy. It's it's, but amenity is judgment. And, and I hope that goes some way towards answering your question. Any further questions? I think did Councillor Hughes have a further question? No. no. Are there any further questions? You know, if not, then we'll go on to comments. Well, first of all, I'm very, very surprised that this has come before Council. I thought this could have been sorted at planning, because as uh, people up there wouldn't probably wouldn't know that uh, some would. A planning, obviously, is plenary powers. You don't have to come anywhere else if it's planning. It's, it's agreed or it's not agreed. But the site, the person, I must say this, whoever decided that this was a good site, I, I think is very wrong, if it's a man or a woman. Now, in that area there, we have a church, very thriving church, with new apartments going up. We've got the Dallas Library, famous Carnegie Library, we got the Cancer Aid at the top, the, the Oasis at the top of the ground there, and you've got the Dowler Stables. So that area is by the schools there, uh, bus access, we've got it all there, you know, bus routes. And in fact, it saved us Dowler Stables. The, the JCB was there, and I died in front of it, but I'll tell you all about it another time. So what I'm saying is really is that this is not conducive to building houses. And I think I know a little bit about it. I've represented the area. For over 40 years, I did have one because of my job and one because a pack of lies, but we've lost all of that. That's politics. We can take it. We're big enough. But what I'm saying is, whoever decided to build houses there is absolutely <coughs> wrong. You've got houses in front of you. You've got a lovely bank there, which I think should be wildflowers, uh, a couple of shrubs, a couple of trees, beautify the area, and you've got the wonderful cancer aid at the top. And I can remember the, the meter I went to when I was cabinet member uh, for all that, same as you, David. 
And uh, said, no, officer, gone now. Said, no, we'll have it down the bottom, he said. We'll have it down the bottom there. I said, you won't have it down the bottom. I said, you'll have it at the top. And at the top, it's gone. And at the top, it's staying. So I'm saying what I'm saying as elected member for Dowers and Pant, and overall for, for the local authority, you should not consider building houses. Now, we've got a site up in the Iver Works there. If you want to send people up there, go and have a look at that. You can build as many as you like. And there is clean ground there. And it is, Red Julian. Yeah. We worked at it hard, but last time we had a, a slip up time for last. We visited different places. But this is not conducive to housing. Who the hell wants to live there on a little road with houses in front of you? We're not going back to old times, man. When Dowless and Merthyr was half slums and uh, roads and down the back for the joy. We don't want that. Planning is more than planning. Planning is thought. Give people. Give them something to look forward to when they come home. Not to look at a back of house or, 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 or somebody, somebody else living there. So my feelings tonight, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, is that whoever decided this is absolutely wrong. This is not conducive for housing. And I prepare to stand up. I won't be part of it because I'm not on planning. I'm not on it. But I can tell you now, we did have a case. Sir. You, sir, might remember it when we took, I took two barristers on and I came out on top. I wasn't afraid. We'd done it on a right away in, in, in the gas lane. So don't be put off. If you're in the situation, we're in it. But as far as I'm concerned, not one brick should be laid up there, not one concrete block. There's people in the houses should have peace and quiet. The Cancer Aid, which is an oasis, that is a wonderful place. That wants peace and quiet. And there's loads of, loads of ground up in the Iver Works. Get on there, get some site meetings going there and build up there. So me, I am categorically against any building in this area, full stop. Before, before anybody goes any further, just in case anybody is going to pick up any of the points that Councillor Rogers made, I just need to be very clear that you as council approved that site for housing in December. So everything else that Councillor Rogers said, of course he's perfectly entitled to say, but you are considering this planning application you did previously approve that site for housing. So try and stick to this planning application. Councillor Skinner. Um, it was just to comment on, um, I know Carrie said that there was a paragraph at the top of page 75, but the questions I've asked, for me, I've raised a number of concerns around safety elements, and personally I don't feel assured or I don't feel like I've got the uh, enough answers. So for me there's still a lot of unanswered questions, certainly around road safety. Uh, Declan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First of all, I'd just like to stress <coughs> that uh, at this debate and anything that's said in it is not a slight against any of the, uh, the planning officers for the work you've undertaken so far. Uh, you do amazing work. Um, I will say that this planning application goes ahead. Many comments and statements made by patients who use the facility express the same sentiments that there will be a reluctance to attend or request assistance due to the perceived stigma of obvious health problems when their attendance is more in view of the public. Um, now, what it's, what's at stake if we lose cancer aid as an amenity or a community facility? Between January and December 2018, there were 2,696 journeys made to and from NHS cancer treatment services, which equates to over 58,000 miles. Many of those using the service prefer to be picked up and drop, dropped off at the centre instead of their own home due to its discreet location. There were also 909 counselling sessions and therapy sessions delivered to cancer patients and members of their families, some of whom were children. Again, I just remind members that, for, that by proceeding with this planning application will result in a loss of privacy for those using cancer aid and could given comments and statements made by users of the centre's facilities, greatly affect the services it provides as a community facility and amenity. Thank you. Um, are there any other comments? Councillor Amos. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, well, first of all, I second what um, Councillor Salmon has said. Uh, uh, whatever decision is taken tonight, it's no reflection <coughs> on the quality of, of the planners. Um, they put together an excellent report. There's no doubt about that. I would like to make some comments on Geraint's advice that he gave us, um, perfectly proper advice, um, about the consequences if we do refuse this this evening. It could go to an appeal. It could cost the council money. 
uh, if that appeal does come forward. All I would say is that uh, we have to do what's right and what's wrong. And if we perceive that this application should be refused, we should refuse it. Uh, if we do our work, the planning committee or whether it's full council, on the basis that we try to second guess the result, um, and we have to take advice and say, well, it's going to cost us money, so we'll have to approve it. There's no point in having a planning committee. There's no point in having a, a full council consider this. So we have to look at this on its merits. Now, turn into the actual application. Uh, page, pages 80, 81, it, it sets out the sections of Planning Policy Wales, edition 10, and the sections of it that have been applied to the report. Um, and I'm a bit surprised that uh, there's absolutely no reference to m other areas of the report, which uh, of these of the um, of Pali policy in Wales that I think are important. Now, for the benefit of, of members, I'm not going to I'm not going to um, put copies of the uh, planning policy Wales around, but for the benefit of them, paragraph 2.25. Um, outlines the assessment pro uh, process, and I, I won't quote it at length, but what it does say is key factors in the process include how the proposal changes a person's way of life, and who will benefit and suffer any impacts from the proposal. Now, I paraphrase that, of course, but that, I think, really does apply here, because there, it certainly will change the, the way of life of the people who go to the cancer aid building, and they will be the person who suffer. They won't get any benefits from it, that's for sure. So that's that particular paragraph. And then we move on then in, in, the, uh, in plan Planning Policy Wales to paragraph, uh, bear with me, paragraph 2.9. And I'm sure the planners will, will be aware, at the heart of that document is, is the term placemaking uh, and how they, how, um, Planning Policy Wales seeks to uh, apply w what I think is in the five ways of working to planning. And again, I won't quote it in its entirety, but placemaking is a holistic approach to the planning and design of development and spaces. Focused on positive outcomes, it draws upon an area's potential to create high quality development public spaces that promote promotes people's health, happiness, and well-being in the wider sense. Well, Again, I come back to cancer aid, it doesn't. It considers the context, function, function and relationships between a development site and its wider surroundings. It will be true for major developments creating new places as well as smaller developments within a wider place. Now, this is what we've got here. This is, we've, we've got a small development adjacent to a facility that, pr that fosters good health and supports people who are seriously ill. So I think that is also relevant. Uh, finally, um, I'll turn to paragraph 3.2. Um, in disadvantage, uh, sorry. This is a substantial document, by the way, it's about that thick. Um, 3.2. Disadvantages, disadvantage and deprived communities tend to be disproportionately affected by health problems. Planning authorities have a role to play in the prevention of physical and mental illnesses caused or exacerbated by, their, and uh, they, there's a list of illnesses and conditions listed, uh, and it's the duty of the planning uh, authority to safeguard immunity. And, and this comes back to something I touched on when I was answering, um, or I attempted to answer Councillor Carter's uh, question. Safeguard immunity. What is immunity? Well, in my opinion, the immunity is for cancer aid to do the wonderful job that they do now uh, for their clients, and I think Councillor Salmon has outlined uh, the sheer number that they see, and they really want their privacy, and they want the tranquility, and I don't <coughs> think this application, this, this development, will in any way benefit them, and on the grounds I've just uh, outlined, those are the reasons why I certainly oppose this. It should never be in that location, <coughs> and cancer aid should be left in peace as it is now. As Tony said, it is a veritable oasis for people who suffer from that terrible disease. That's my feeling on it. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Oh, Councillor Carter. Yeah, th thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I find it is quite tough 
truth be told, it's quite an emotive subject. I'm sure most people here tonight have probably been touched by cancer in one shape or form, whether themselves or relatives, etc. So it's, re it's quite an emotional subject. So a lot of things are pulling your heartstrings and also pulling on what you need to do as well. By legally, I suppose, and what we can and can't do. So, for for me, it's a question of you know I don't quite know is the honest answer, and being an an an, an educated person in regards to planning, doing what's right to you is is two pronged. I suppose is is doing what's right. For the communities which I see it, and not the community, but the people who, who visit Cancer Aid and uh, use the services, etc., but also doing what's right for planning. So it's, it's, it's quite a tough one. Um, are there any other? Oh, it's Councillor Roberts. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, I, I, I'll echo what uh, Councillor Carter just said. Um, with um, planning, um, it's always looked at as non-political. Um, as such, at our group meeting yesterday evening, um, I insisted that we did not discuss this because it shouldn't be political. Um, and as a result, um, our members of the Labour group are having a free vote on this this evening. I think that's probably one of the first times that you know we haven't been whipped in this chamber as a as a Labour group. So. That's the first point I'd like to make. For me, again, I agree with Brent. I, I don't sit on planning. In fact, this is the first planning meeting that I've attended in seven years. I've never had the, the, the need to. Um, I'm no expert on it. Um, I've had no training. I, I wasn't able to attend the training. So I, I'm finding it quite difficult to, to, to look at it either way. I'm always inclined to go with the officer's recommendation because they are the professionals on it and they do a great job. However, there's been a lot of um, concerns raised, and, and rightly so, um, and nobody can dispute the, the excellent work that is done at Cancer Aid. Um, personally, I think this shouldn't be at full council. I think that it should have been decided at the, the planning committee. It is making a mockery of the planning committee and the process. Um, so with that in mind, I'll, I'll tell everybody how I'm going to vote tonight, because uh, it is a free vote for the Labour group. I can't support the application because it would be unfair on Cancer Aid, and I can't go against the officers because it would be unfair on the applicant. So I will be abstaining on it. Thank you. Uh, Councillor O'Neill? Oh, oh, yes. I suppose I may have used the Cancer Aid Centre more than most, but... You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm going to be impartial on this. And for me, the reason why I'm turning this down tonight, right, is on that material planning uh, um, consideration. Because I think, I know we've got a case for social housing in Merthyr, and we need more social housing built in Merthyr. But I just think <coughs> it's a dangerous place to put houses, and I think it's unsafe for the, for the residents that could be living in those houses. Yes. Uh, are there any other comments? Oh, Mal Malcolm. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, just following on from what um, Councillor Carter and Councillor Roberts said, some things are, are perhaps more black and white on the planning, and we're in, in danger of falling foul if we go against officer recommendations. But the first point, 3.2, is the central loss of amenity. That is a judgment call. There's no right, there's no wrong answer to that. It's up to each individual councillor to vote on that how they like. If it goes to appeal, we might lose because someone else on the planning, on the, you know, the, the judge might have a different view to the council. But that is not a wrong reason for turning down this application, uh, as far as I'm concerned. I'm sure the plans will correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, are there any other co comments? Uh, does anyone want to make a closing comment then? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yes. Okay, uh, thank you, Clive. Um, well, it's going to be dealt with tonight, so I'm not going to talk about the past, I'm talking about the future. For you tonight to be accountable to make a decision. Um, I was in a room two years ago in this success, and some individuals not here tonight said this won't be a problem. It'll never happen. 
But here we are, again. It's not the first time for me to be again in a planning issue, but it was never going to happen. And here we are again. Um, unlike the Columbo approach of some, I've had to become an expert at planning. I've had to go down to planning and sit with them and talk to them. I've had to read the books. I've had to go to the training. And actually, we did very well in our training, didn't we, planners? Yeah? Yeah? We got to learn the business, didn't we? Yeah? So this is not about emotion. And that's why I reiterate the question. Is this a material planning consideration? It is. And that's where you, you go against planning, when it's a material planning consideration. Let's be very clear on that in clinical. <laughs> I've been involved in this. A compromise has been sought from both sides. I've had meetings with both parties, try to resolve it. It's surprising to me the bungalows are out of it, because that was a key issue at one time. But they've dropped away now. The bungalows are gone. The LDP is a huge document. It's there for everybody to see, but nobody looks at it, to be quite frank with you. Yeah? It's a massive document. And yes, we all sign up to it. Yeah? And when, within the detail is this, this bit of planning. I want to be clinical, not emotional. I, I'm, I'm blessed. I've never had to suffer through cancer, and none of my family have. So I, I can't tell you any, any, any tales. I respect to all those who have, and I understand that my close friend Geraint has as well. Councillor Hughes raised a, a material planning consideration. And may I add, costing or funding should not influence your decision in this matter. So should it not be purported to do so. This is a matter for conscience. Finally, we will have to make a decision based on what we've got tonight. And this, this, this facility is an incredible facility for this town. There is no doubt about it. The statistics are there. It is very emotional. But what, what cost life? What cost end of life? It's a material planning consideration. And that's what we make the decision on. And I believe the case has been proved. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, if there's no one else going to speak, that was the last speaker. <coughs> well, I, I did. Yeah. So what we need to do now is to list the object, uh, or should we do the vote first? No. no so what we'll need to do is be very clear about the grounds. If you are considering the proposal that's been put forward, which is that you reject the planning application. So if you vote <coughs> yes, you will be voting to reject the planning application. If you are going to say that, you have to have clear reasons. Now, what we currently have is a proposal from Councillor Amos that you adopt paragraph 3.2 and use those reasons. And then Councillor Hughes has raised an issue that he will have to give us precise wording, uh, or he or somebody will have to give us precise wording, and that will be the basis of whatever you decide if you decide to vote for the recommendation that is now before you which is to reject the planning application you will have to have agreed what reasons you're going to put now i don't think we we vote on the reasons uh, unless Geraint tells me differently so you've got a suggestion from councillor amos to use the three that you've got there and if councillor hughes or somebody with councillor hughes can suggest the wording of the, of the reason that he wants to put You, you've got that width of the highway. Um, I'm not sure whether Councillor Hughes is saying something slightly more technical than that, because that's a slightly generalised thing. So I think we probably, if you keep that in, if everybody decides to keep that in, I think you still will need something that's specific based on what Councillor Hughes is saying. So um, Councillor Hughes or, or Councillor Thomas, if you want to say, and can you say it slowly, because we're going to have to write down exactly what I believe it's Highway Act uh, 1980, and it's to do with vision displays when accessing or leaving a property. And there is a there is a formula that it's worked out on the 30 miles an hour. And I've <coughs> checked this with our own highways department, and they said it's 45 meters. So, and when I I um, Accept the the um, the planners uh, what they said. However, when I built, it was when I was told that you had to adhere to this planning. 
I read that, 1980, Visions, please. Okay, so is that exactly what you want? So, I'm not sure that, that right at this moment you're gonna be able to get the right section or whatever, I'm not as concerned about that. What you have to say is, why is that a reason why you would reject this planning complaint, uh, pl planning application? So what you've said <coughs> is what your issue is. So what, what you need to do is explain why that's a problem. Bear with me because I'm just taking this off the cuff from my from my colleague, but I just want to help him out, okay? So um, I think that what he's saying is that he is not recommending this planning application due to the visual display recommendations as set out in the Highways Act 1980 as a material planning issue. Does that suffice, dear Or do you want more detail? I'll try and give something else. Okay. The word in. Well, the word in then is that he is... Um, recommending refusal of the planning application due to a material planning issue in line with the Highways Act 1980 with reference to the recommended visual displays when entering or leaving a residential property. Yeah? Yeah. But, um Lisa is uh, and, and, and Dave is saying, are we absolutely sure here? And I turn to Geraint. Quoting this um, uh, Act 1980, I'm always a bit dubious about quoting legislation where we don't actually know the. Is, is this, uh, do we absolutely, if we do, fair enough. If I can add to that, if we may do, just to clarify this, because it is such an important and critical issue, then. In addition to the last words I have, forgive me, Gary, I'll have to remind me, but then we could say, and also 3.2, which is which is the reference that you made, because I think, personally, I'm going to say this personally, that my decision will also be based, based on two. One, the material issue, but my other decision will also be based on the very uh, clear points that you gave, Councillor Amos, in relation to the loss of amenity. So I would add to that, and also the loss of amenity as set out in 3.2. And then it gives the whole. I, I'm happy to support both my colleagues in that. I was trying to help my colleague out, so let's go with that, and we'll say the word legislation instead of Highway Act. Yeah, cool. Say that um, we, we can't give you the word. I'm, I'm looking at Geraint because I'm desperately trying to tell you how you could make it make sense, right? Because what you have, if you look at the other ones, what you've got is such and such a thing has happened and that causes a problem, yeah. right? <laughs> so, yeah. What, what, what you never got to was, you, you said it, there's an issue about display and there's an issue which is a highways cons um, issue because of that le legislation and I was waiting for you to say and that causes a problem because... No. <laughs> we, we got to that point and we never... <coughs> doing planning when we get to this stage is you would sit there with your piece of pen and paper and you would try and word the reason for refusal. The reason for refusals are yours. They're not ours. We cannot word them for you. So, but, so I would suggest if you try and word something on a piece of paper, see if it works, have a discussion with the colleagues next to you and see if that, but we, it, it's, uh, and, and if you look at the three of them, it's the width of a highway, even with proposed widening, committee does not deem wide enough. So we need the, the why. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, yeah, I completely understand that. Uh, forgive me, um, but I thought that I had concluded in saying because of the issues around the recommended visual display not being in line with this, but, uh, you know, I understand that we're doing it off the cuff. So, okay, G right, okay, I guess Mr. Mayor or... Uh, um, Officer, we need to perhaps just have a five minute. I need to, because we don't need to write this properly. In fairness to Geraint, we need to write this legally properly. No, exactly. 
exactly. So can I call for a five-minute recess, please? So can I call for a five-minute recess, then, Mr. Yes. Mayor? Yeah, okay. that's Thank okay. You. Yes.
perhaps if we could take our seats now then, if, if we are ready. <coughs> are there any councillors missing? Uh, Right. Uh, have, have we lost any council? Have we lost any councillors? Who sat next to? Who's oh, oh, that's okay. Then. Oh well, we, we may as well resume then. So, if Lisa, Lisa could read out the word in. Yes, thank you, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. I shall give this a whirl. Apologies if it's technically not right again, but we're just doing it off the cuff. So, okay. So, to support my colleagues' recommendation, the planning be refused on the grounds of highways and public safety, as we think the issues raised on lines of sight, as per statutory legislation, will cause a public highway problem, as well as a substantial loss of amenity for a voluntary organisation. And I have three councillors who are willing to then take part in any further debate or, 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 or um, matter of JR, etc. I would say in relation to that, Lisa, is that you brought the substantial loss of amenity into your visibility splay argument. Well, you've already got the substantial loss of amenity. So, so, so to clarify then, it will just be Highways public safety, as we think the issues raised on the lines of sight, as per statutory legislation, will cause a public highway problem. The, yes. Okay, fair enough. So it's now four, it's four bullet points now. Four bullet points. Oh, sorry. Right, so, sorry, Mr. Mayor, if I can just make sure now that everybody is completely clear, because you have to be completely clear before you vote on this. If you vote yes, you will be voting in favour of rejecting the planning um, application. And as I understand it, you have four grounds for that. You have the three <coughs> bullet points at 3.2 on page 74. And you have the further point that Councillor Mitten has just read out. Yeah. Now, is there anybody who does not agree that those are your reasons for if you are going to vote to say that you reject the planning application? Is anybody who wants to change those reasons in any way? No. Can I just make sure? Maya, have you got those reasons written down? I have. You've got them written down, so that we, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> if, if Councillor Mitten can speed right to make sure we got those. So, the reasons are, firstly, substantial loss of amenity for a voluntary organisation that provides palliative care for persons suffering from cancer. Secondly, width of the highway, even with the proposed widening, committee does not deem wide enough. Thirdly, due to the excavation of the site, the water runoff that could lead to stability concerns of the voluntary organisation and re uh, residential homes. And fourthly, it is recommended that the planning be refused on the grounds of highways and public safety as we think the issues raised on the lines of sight as per statutory legislation will cause a public highway problem. On the basis of those reasons, the recommendation before you 
is to achieve refuse the planning application. So, Mr. Mayor, can I ask you to put that to the vote? You put that one to the vote, then. Thanks. That is carried, yeah. uh, and therefore the planning application is rejected. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can we please have quiet? Yeah. I know I know you oh, want to celebrate, but can you be quiet? Yeah. Um, and can we please therefore have the four nominated members who will take this forward? Uh, yeah, they are Councillor Amos, Councillor Salmon, Councillor Hughes, uh, and, and, and I'll nominate myself, Councillor Mitten. I wanted to say the eyes have it uh, and, and lock the door. <laughs> yeah, if you uh, uh, let uh, tell the other councillors, thanks. And if if yeah. the members of the public would like to stop for the rest of the meeting, they're welcome. Oh, uh, the next item on the agenda, item num number five, the pay policy statement 2019 to 20. Oh, yeah. And I understand Councillor Barry's taking this report. Uh, perhaps if we could close the door at the back. Um, Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is the annual pay policy statement uh, requiring full council's approval. In conjunction with the National Joint Committee and National Employers and Offers made the trade uh, with trade unions, 2017 for a two-year deal. Uh, we as an employer have been ahead of the curve uh, in initialising the foundation uh, living wage uh, for the entire staff. Details of the policy are found at page 100. Uh, the financial implications uh, you will see at seven page 98 although there are obvious financial implications uh, through this policy they are more clearly defined from the policy uh, before taking the recommendations I'd like to thank Fran she's done a lot of work in her team done a lot of work with this and obviously the representatives of GMB Unison and Unite for the work that they put into this policy as well um, recommendations are 2.1 to 2.2 uh, the pay policy 1920 uh, to be implemented from the 1st of April be approved uh, and 2.2, delegate authority be given to the Head of Human Resources for any future amendments to the statement in consultation with portfolio member be approved, I move. Is there a seconder? I second, Mr Mayor. Uh, are there any questions? Councillor Jones. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, on page 101 of the pay policy statement, um, paragraph 1.6, um, it states their first line, it should be noted that Merthyr Tilbury County Borough Council an employer of circa 1,000 employees. Um, I think we should have the actual figure in there. And um, can I ask uh, HR officer for the figure, please? Yes, of course. So the actual figure of Merthyr County Borough Council employees is 1,228. School direct employees is 1,551. As this policy only relates to council employees, the correct figure there, if you want an, a, an actual figure instead of an estimate, would be 1,228. Thank you. Are there any other questions? There's no questions. Any comments? No? Well, we'll take it to the vote then. Thanks.
Oh, so that's ca that's carried then. Thanks. Next item on the agenda uh, is the local toilet. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Can we get Councillor Rob? Next item on the agenda is the local toilet strategy, and I understand Ger Geraint Thomas has taken it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this has been quite a uh, substantial bit of work that uh, Susan Gow and the team have done. It's been uh, a cross uh, council uh, job, I think. Fair to say, many officers' time has been involved in it, so it's a fair old document. Um, the summary of the report is set out between 1.1 and 1.6 um, as we can see it's a welsh government uh, public health wales act um, document that we've had to provide a report we've had a, a policy we had to provide um, i'll go straight to the recommendations set out in 2.1 to 2.3 the toilet strategy to be published on council website on, on before 31st of may 2019 be approved establish a task and finish group to take forward the proposals contained in the strategy be approved the Council will publish an interim progress report setting out the steps taken in accordance with the strategy every two years, commencing from when the Council last published or two years from the date of the last, last post-election review of the strategy. Publication of the review is required within six months, be noted. I so move. Is there a seconder? I second, Mr Mayor. Okay. Are there any questions? Well, Councillor Jones. Thank you, Mr Mayor. On page 122, um, and it's uh, the paragraph lower down which start off easily found facilities with good direction signage and individual facility information um, it goes on to say about the provision of physical signposts to direct the public to available toilets and areas associated with uh, transport hubs etc is it I know there's a task and finish group uh, that's likely to be set up but I believe if we can start putting the signs up to direct people, because there are toilet facilities available, i.e. indoor market, um, here, the civic centre, um, the old town hall, etc. Is it possible to, to start this with, with putting the signs up? Because the first vi thing visitors ask, and others, where are the toilets? So if we put directional signs to start putting them up, we start solving the problem. Uh, anyone answering that? So, um, I know I know that um, part of the uh, active travel and some of the Metro Plus work we're going to be doing shortly, that funding is going to be made available for better signage right throughout the borough and in particular around the town centre. So I think that that will be happening quite shortly. Okay. Uh, Councillor Amos. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I was I was going to ask, really, uh, there's, it's, it's a well-set-out well document, um, the strategy, but could I, could I just ask um, Geraint uh, and the leader, perhaps, as well, are there any plans at all to do anything about the bus station toilets? Because at the, down there at the moment, we've got, we have got an existing gents' toilet and a, and a ladies' gents' um, toilet, but yet we're, we're relying on the goodwill of, um, of Sharon there people use that disabled toilet irrespective of whether they're using her uh, cafe uh, anyway so that, but the facilities are there so are there any plans to reopen that a lot of people I speak to come to Merton and say well you know uh, where's the toilet there at the bus station because they've just come off along with this bus plus they want to go to the toilet so are there any plans to, to, to do something about that um, the two answers no Councillor Amos you know um, in, in the short term, there's no plans to reopen the, the public toilets at the bus station. But as you know, we're going through a process and the, the new bus station um, should be built in the next 18 months and there will be public toilets in the new bus station. Are there any other questions? Are there any comments? No? Oh, we'll, t we'll take it to the vote then, thanks. Oh, the voting's complete and it's carried. Um, 
item number seven has been withdrawn today. Uh, so um, the petition about the old general hospital, uh, that's been withdrawn. So uh, item number eight. Sorry, Mr Mayor, can I ask if that's coming back to council in the sometime in the near future? Yes, Darren. Yeah, um, there's a meeting um, in the next few weeks with the, the, the current owners of the uh, general hospital with the regeneration department and other partners as well. So hopefully we'll have some news. I'm not saying it's going to be in the next council meeting, or we might send a scrutiny before that as well. But I would say in, in the next three to four months, it would come back to council. I understand that the meeting's taking place in early May. And, and can I move a correction to what's in the report? Is that possible? Item number eight, statement of well-being and focus on the future, well-being in our community. I understand a Andrew's taking this. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, statement of well-being, focus on the future. Uh, Five-year uh, periods, 2017-22. Plan sets out the what and how we will achieve these objectives. Uh, we review the plan and objectives annually uh, to ensure they remain fit for purpose. Changes this year, minimal priorities uh, this year have been made more explicit. Uh, we've looked at streamlining and improving outcomes. Uh, the report was presented to the governance uh, scrutiny on the 9th of April. Uh, this is the final uh, report presented to members for endorsement today. The plan will be translated and published on our website uh, by the 30th of April when all the regulatory bodies will be uh, Made it be made available to them. Recommendations at 2.1. Just to check. Hang on. Uh, the statement of well being and focus on the future well being and our community documents are approved. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Was there a seconder? I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Are there any questions? No questions. Are there any comments? No, we take it to the vote then. Thanks. That, that's, that one's carried then. The next item on the agenda is just an information uh, report, Ombudsman's annual letter, so we don't discuss those. So item number 10, to deal with any other urgent business or correspondence, uh, I've not got any, and I've got no communications either. So thank you all for your attendance today.